night one had some feeling blue. None more than the Kentucky faithful. The three seed Wildcats falling 80 to 76 to Oakland. The Golden Grizzlies, Jack Golke. The folk hero emerged from this one, pouring in 10 threes in the upset victory. For Coach Cal and the Cats, just another early exit and the lingering thought of, what just happened? In with his view on all that occurred, CBS Soup's analyst Tim Doyle. TD, Golke was really the star Ooh. of the night, pouring in those three pointers. We did have a 40 point performance as well. We'll get there, but. Golke said post game, don't call us Cinderella, which insinuates this in their eyes. Oakland wasn't as much of an upset as we saw it as. And when you take a look at Coach Cal and his team, one and four, their last five tourney games sort of falls in line with what they've become historically in this tournament. Well, and they've also were a roller coaster team this season, right? We didn't know what team we were going to get in the tournament. Was it going to be the team that went down to Knoxville and looked like the best team in college basketball? When they smacked around the volunteers, or was it going to be a team that at times. Defense was optional, mm -hmm. and they just tried to outscore teams. I think their lack of discipline in this game from a defensive perspective, Goki came in the game shooting the whole season. <laughs> Eight two-pointers, meaning Joe, he's going to shoot a lot of threes. Uh -huh, got and 20 up in this one. Come on, that's just unacceptable. He actually shot too many. Forget about that. He made 10. He should have even never even shot that many. Uh, Sky report was bad. He got in a rhythm. He got in a flow. And hats off to Coach Campy up there at Oakland. He said, we played in a lot of close games. We felt comfortable down the stretch. We had a confidence about ourselves. And good for him. He's been coaching a long time. I remember when he had, like, the, the, the big uh, hair with the curls and stuff. <laughs> I think he's put some rollers in it. Now it's a little more tamed. He gave his team the confidence to go out there and beat the team that I pit pick to cut down the nuts when it was all said. Yeah, we cut up that bracket instead, uh, but there is money to be made throughout this tournament, no doubt about that. Goki, you said you said eight eight two-point field goals this season? Eight, shot. Eight two-point shot Just attempts. Just shot attempts. For Goki. I want to know how many of those were threes that his foot was on the line, <laughs> too, so not even intending to be a two. Uh, Kansas got a scare put into them. They do move on. We slotted across from Gonzaga, I believe, but Samford really gives them a run for their money in this moment. When you take a look at this near loss for Kentucky or uh, Kansas excuse me do you see this as that valuable learning experience that you can take away from or is this like real holes in the approach for Kansas cause for concern moving forward I think it's cause for concern moving forward because Sanford wanted to play fast Kansas was like cool let's play fast they built a double digit lead and you thought <laughs> the scheme was over mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden here comes Sanford crawling back in this game, made it the one possession game, had a chance to even take the lead down the stretch. It should have never got to this point, Joe. You know, Hunter Dixon, another monster effort, 20 yeah. rebounds, made the big pass down the stretch. K.J. Adams has the slam. Kansas just did enough, and honestly, Sanford was a block dunk away from potentially winning this game. You watch the tape, that was a clean block on Nick Timberlake late in the game. They're not able to review it. He makes two free throws, and Sanford ends up going home. But if you're a Kansas fan right now, obviously you're trying to overcome injuries. You're trying to overcome Hunter Dickinson at 100%. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to make perimeter shots. And all season long, Joe, that's been a huge issue for them. Now by hook or by crook, they get by in this one. And we're already licking our chops for some of the matchups established here that we're going to see on Saturday. How's Michigan State North Carolina Saturday sound? A rematch of the 09 title game as we get a look at that uh, block that you just I mean it's clean it's it, all ball it's it's hard to argue with and I mean he takes a hard fall it looked like it was contact but honestly watch right here the it's nothing but orange he touched. I don't even think he touched his fingers. The optics of it uh, with the fall don't look great, but as you see in slow motion, there's something that you'd hope this crew could take a look at, but they don't have that ability down the stretch. They get that one wrong, and it's all the right that Kansas needed. But let's move forward to that Michigan State-North Carolina matchup coming our way on Saturday. 9 rematch from the title game. What do you see between those two really blue-blooded programs? You know, I think that Michigan State's overmatched in this game. I'm not going to lie, but when you look at the spread, why is it 3 and half you know because it's Tom Izzo it's March and how many how many times have we seen this movie but this game is going to be as you see on the top of your screen in Charlotte this is a <laughs> home game for North Carolina painted powder blue Michigan State has had a very difficult time against Carolina over their last five matchups they've been owned by UNC why is this game three and a half 
Somebody knows something somewhere that we know. Michigan State played great. The game was not competitive against Mississippi State. They made shots. Tyson Walker was leading this squad. They were uh, physical. They played that Tom Izzo defense. I just think North Carolina is a different beast. North Carolina can win it all. Michigan State can't win it all. But this line is just like so unusual to me. I, I think North Carolina is six, seven points better mm -hmm. than Michigan State. I think you look at guys like R.J. Davis, Cormac Ryan. North Carolina went to Duke one-handedly. Also beat Duke at home. They've had some outstanding wins. Armando Baycott down low. They have experience. They have good guard play. I think Michigan State's overmatched in this game. But you bet against this, though. You're betting against the best. You're a man of great truth, taking full responsibility for your bracket already. Right. Ask, ask me who I have winning. Who do you have winning? North Carolina. <laughs> So I don't like that three and a half either. It's scaring me. So does Tom Izzo at all times come tourney time. Uh, we did have a couple outstanding individual efforts. The aforementioned goalkeeper. We also had 40 from Jermaine Kuznard. Not just 40, but 40 against a team that you used to suit up for. This is the story. Those sort of narratives that make March what it is. Uh, Kuznard, the former South Carolina Hooper, puts up 40 on his former team, Oregon. Now set for that meeting with Creighton. Going to be a great matchup. Did your opinion of the Ducks change in any way coming off this win, knowing that they have a guy who can go like that and he's not even their one? Yeah, great point. He's not their one. Nafale Dante is their one, and they play through him, but Kuznard, wow. Talk about sweetness right now. Joe, <laughs> I know you haven't been fired from places, but I've been fired. I've been kicked to the curb, okay? <laughs> and nothing is better than taking your own team and mushing them right in the face with a 40 spot. Pretty good names, I would say, up on that list, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, some Wally Ball, Steph, I mean, 40 in the tournament is special. I don't care who you played for. I don't care what your name is. To go out there and toss up 40 in a moment like this to move your team over for a matchup with Creighton, it's spectacular stuff and the stuff that we, we live and dream about March for. Totally, and this is going to be a great matchup. The next matchup between Kalkbrenner and Dante, you mm -hmm. got two teams that can clearly score. The Creighton was one of the more impressive teams on the offensive end. They shot it. They moved the ball. They played with a ton of confidence. Uh, it's going to be a fun one to watch, but they are playing Oregon. At the wrong time, Ducks are playing their best basketball of the year. Fantastic matchup there, but we have fantastic matchups between now and then as well. Take me to your favorite on Friday, Slate. Friday, we're going to go first game. Oh, boy. Do you see UConn's uh, region? They got three teams last year that were in the Final Four, and one of them? FAU, oh boy, so tough, FAU. They got the same cast of characters. Vlad Golden is back, Elijah Martin is back, John L. Davis is back, and if you go through their schedule, Neutral site games where they gave Illinois all they could handle. Neutral site games where they knocked off Arizona. This was a spread that was originally one and a half for Northwestern. Mm -hmm. and now it's up to three and a half for FAU. I went to Northwestern, love Northwestern. Northwestern is not the same team that beat Purdue in December, that beat Illinois, Michigan State in January. Just over the last two months, they've taken losses to teams like Rutgers, Minnesota, Iowa, all non-tournament teams. Mm -hmm. So really like FAU in this spot. I think Northwestern's a good team. Not great. You see Matthew Nicholson dumping down the ball there. He has not played an extended period of time. They're also missing another starter in Ty Berry. And their best player, Boo Boo, he's one of the best point guards in the country. But, Joe, he's going to have to be near perfect. Yeah. Have the game of his season if Northwestern's going to pull off now what is considered an upset knockoff FAU. See that video? They don't even, they don't even put our cats in 1080 anywhere, for, let alone 4K. Grainy, I don't know if it uh, bodes well for Friday's matchup. We'll see what it looks like. Few programs are trying to shake that March mush as well. You know, coming in with the uh, with the weight of history on their backs. Who's primed for an upset, do you think? As we've seen one already, who do you think might be in that circle come Friday? I'm going to look at Marquette. Now, Tyler Kohler comes back, and mm -hmm. I don't care what you say. You haven't played for an extended period of time, and then they put you in the lineup, and then you got to try to find your groove again. You don't just, like, snap rack in, and then you play against a team in Western Kentucky. By the way, their best player is a left-handed point guard, just like Kolek. And I like to call him the Don. Don <laughs> McHenry can score. He was outstanding in Conference USA's championship game where he had 25 points. And I talked to someone close to that conference championship USA game. And I said, what do you think? He told me Western Kentucky would beat Marquette. I'm not going to name his name. It was Avery Johnson. So Avery Johnson, who called him, Avery Johnson touched him. He, he physically it. got yeah. to like go like this around Western Kentucky. He said they're really good. I know they're getting a ton of points in this game, 14 and a half. But Marquette, 
We don't know what we're going to get. They were great when they were healthy, and they kind of stumbled towards the finish line. Last year, high expectations in the tournament, bowed out early. So that is a game that I'm going to be watching out for. Hey, when coach gives you the early scout, you got to take it and run with it. Tim Doyle, we've only just begun, my friend, and what a night it was. Round one, night one in the books, and all sorts of fun on our way and on our airwaves. You can watch it all on the March Madness Live app Thursday and Friday. It's also coming your way on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus.